Okay, hopefully in the last video I didn't confuse you at all. Uh, but let's let's take what we uh, did learn and see if we can apply it some, in some way, shape, or form. Okay, so let's find out let's find out if we can find out the mass of oxalic acid that's in this this unknown um, solution down here. Okay, and it looks like we have available to us. It looks like we've got some 0.61 molar. Uh, Sodium hydroxide. You know, I, I told you that'd be a very common uh, titration base. Okay, and uh, all right, so we're doing our little uh, titration, and of course, I've got my indicator solution um, down there. You know, and I add it, and let's say at thirty-two point six one milliliters, um, I, I notice this little color change. Everything kind of changes down here. Okay. So that's when I, I write that down on my little scratch paper and I, and I start using that um, to do some analysis on this thing. So what, what's the first thing we need to know here? Okay. Well, first, first of all, you know, we are, we, we are dealing with a chemical reaction, so we, we need to uh, get a, a chemical equation going here. So let's just start. We have NaOH, and we're going to add that to oxalic acid. So as you can see, you need to be comfortable with your nomenclature, okay? Um, you know, in, in a neutralization, that'll give us uh, water plus a salt. So what type of salt's gonna happen? Uh, so let's see, this, well, this, this is probably, um, you know, the ions will probably separate, so we'll have this oxalate ion. Um, so we'll probably have Na2O4, if I did that correctly. Um, yeah, it looks like that's okay. That's um, this is gonna be some type of uh, sodium salt right there. Okay, so let's make sure we've balanced this sucker too. Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna need another um, water, and let's see. It looks like I'm gonna need another sodium. So am I balanced? I got six oxygens. I got six oxygens over here. Four hydrogens. Yes. Okay, good. All right, so I'm balanced, and let's see here. What 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 happened? We um we okay. Let's write down what we know. We have um we probably know the most about our sodium hydroxide, and that's that it took 0 0.061 moles of NaOH. Okay. And per 1,000 milliliters, because remember mol molarity, remember big M, that's just moles over liter, and 1,000 milliliters a liter, so let's see, 32.61 milliliters, and that's going to give me, bust out the old calculator, pal. looks like and let's see here we got two significant figures it looks like so ooh, our, our answer is going to kind of suck now um, okay that fit all that on the page sure did okay so these cancel out right here the milliliters and now I'm left with that so going back to our little chemical reaction right here Okay, I have 0 0.02. Uh, should I get a different color? Why not? So I have 0 0.020 0 moles of NaOH, sodium hydroxide. Okay, and if we look at our chemical reaction, uh, the sodium hydroxide combines with the oxalic acid in a 2 to 1 ratio. So see, we got 1 mole of ox, I'm just going to abbreviate, to every two mole of NaOH sodium hydroxide. So we'll just um, divide that by two. If we do the math, we get 0 0.010. Remember, we have, uh, we have three significant figures here. Um, and these are exact quantities, so this cancels, this cancels, we're left with moles of ox, okay? 
So, oh, I'm running out of paper here too, aren't I? So let's uh, let's just see if we can't go back up. Oh yeah, we'll do that. So what did I have? 0 0.010 moles of, of ox. And I already did, it did some of the work here. Um, it's actually 90.03 grams per mole. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and multiply that times 90.03, and we get, what do we got? Three of them again, three significant figures. And let's see, the moles of ox cancel, and we're left with grams of ox. So not even a gram was in, was in our original thing. So you see how we did that? Okay, um, we just, um, one of the most important things uh, was, um, you know, getting the chemical equation right, okay? So, so, so I hope we're starting to see kind of the goal of a titration. We're, we're just measuring, uh, you know, how much of one of the reactants we used. And once we find out an amount, like moles, then we're pretty much free to roam, okay? So if we get a balanced chemical equation, Okay, and we know the moles of just one of these things, or even if we know the concentration of just one of these things and an amount, um, then we can then, then we can use our solution stoichiometry to get all the information about the rest of these things. Okay, now also I want to point out: remember that the unknown um, part of uh, the oxalic, oxalic acid. Well. Look at this. It's oxalic acid and an unknown. So it's not like there was a chemical reaction that happened or anything like that. So the oxalic acid is going to react with the sodium hydroxide. It's not going to act, react with the unknown. Okay, so that's why we don't include that in there. I, mean, I think that confuses people sometimes. Um, but, you know, the unknown really doesn't play a part. Okay, and we're actually, once you get into the lab, you'll use water to kind of like, uh, kind of wash down the sides of your flask and everything, and you'll see that that has no bearing on the outcome of the reaction. Okay, so that's another example, and that that's a that's a simple one as well. That that's called the acid-base titration. Okay, so in the next video, we'll probably do some other uh, types of uh, titration. Okay, so you can also use it to find things like molar mass and things like that. Okay, so thanks for watching, and you know. I hope, uh, hope this is uh, helping you out. So more videos on titration to come for sure.